In theory of constraints lingo, there is a subtle difference between the constraint and the bottleneck. A bottleneck is a resource with capacity less or equal to the demand put upon it, while a constraint is a limiting factor of the organization's performance, an obstacle hindering the organization achieving its goal. A constraint can be called bottleneck, but a bottleneck is not always a constraint. Let's take an example of a plant with a sub-assembly workshop using resources A, B and C. In this case, the resources are machines. The whole process needs another resource D and the final assembly consisting of resources E and F. The capacity of each resource is displayed under their ID letter. The demand is 100 units per day and the plant's goal is to deliver the required goods to the market. According to definition, we'll find two bottlenecks. Resource B, which limited capacity is 80 units a day, and resource E, limited to 60 units a day. Each of these two resources have lesser capacity than daily demand. Resource B is limiting resource C, failing to process the required 100 units daily. B is the limiting factor of the whole subassembly workshop, but B has little influence on the throughput of the plant. The plant's throughput is limited by resource E, which is both a bottleneck and a constraint. It is primarily E which hinders the plant to deliver 100 units a day. The distinction between bottleneck and constraint is very important because working to improve the throughput on B is of little interest as long as E keeps being the limiting factor of the whole system, the plant in our case. If we would improve throughput of B, all other things being equal, the additional parts manufactured in subassembly would wait in front of the assembly line, extending the queue of work in progress. The plant as a system will have no benefit from this so-called improvement, as no additional unit can be shipped out and sold. Therefore, all attention must be focused on the constraint, because any improvement of E's throughput will automatically improve the whole plant's throughput. This will remain true until improvement made on E will improve its throughput beyond the throughput of bottleneck B. From then on, and with all other things being equal, B will become the system's constraint and E will remain the bottleneck as long as its capacity is lower than demand. I do hope you found some interest and value in this episode. If yes, thank you for sharing it and giving it a thumb up. See you soon for a new episode.